Now I'm sharing my screen, hopefully. Do you want to do an intro, Paul, or should we just... No, uh, go for it. It's over to you. Yep. We're recording. Okay. Cool. All right. So, welcome, everyone. Um, uh, thanks for coming along. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, some of the uh, some of the things we've been doing in modules, um, uh, which uh, and uh, we've got a few slides here. And uh, so the agenda is we'll we'll have a short, relatively short update, about fifteen minutes, and then ask whatever questions you like. Um, so we've been, I've been, so I, I did a proof of concept a while ago. Um, which I've been forming into some actual things to land. So I've been crashing this, this uh, a bunch of things landing. Uh, like thus far, it's all experimental. Uh, like so, sort of mocking experimental. We don't want we don't want to commit to anything fully at this stage. Which is why all the code, all the packages and stuff for for doing modules, it's all internal because otherwise we'd be publishing a, a public API and people could rely on that we don't want to break people intentionally so it's all going to be it's all internal for now it doesn't stop people from copying the code of course um, because it's it's public code um and and yeah so we're gonna so we're sort of building up a list of things we need to document um and so we'll we'll have a sort of q a F, F, faq type thing um which won't be a full reference to start with but should hopefully give people uh, enough pointers to be able to use the the proof of the the initial experimental version um so alongside that we're doing the you know working on the the server side stuff which will be uh which will implement the the, the github app which is the the initial way of getting stuff into the into the module store into the into the central registry um so that's that that's you know stage one basically we've already talked about that um and then we'll have you know some tests that actually make sure that the whole thing actually works um so uh um so one thing that came up recently and and this is we, we hadn't quite realized the implications of one of the previous design decisions um so I was uh, so the, the decision whether a module inside the uh, inside the NoCI registry actually contains directly contains pointers to the blobs of its dependencies or not. Um, and I thought so. So so um, yeah. So uh, let's let's yeah to to, to refresh things. Um, we, it's like one of the important use cases is being able to split modules between public and private registries um, and you have like a, some sort of configuration file or environment variable uh, which basically says these modules come from this registry all the others come from some other registry um, and that's that's it's certainly an initial um, it, it might be more complex than that in the future but that's that's an initial idea and then then the um, the authorization um, is you know via via a configuration file similar I think will support at least um, the the standard configuration that that is used to um, to do auth, auth to uh, to OCI registries in the standard case which is with Docker conf. Despite the fact we're not Docker, that seems to be the standard standard way that uh, authorization uh, inf authentication information is specified. Um, so um, so like let's yeah you know, to take an example we've got some uh, some module in this case acme.com slash apple that depends on two things one of which is secret and the other is not and um so you know we've, we've got this this thing it points to it logically points to both of those things and then we want to upload this to the to a registry so we're going to take this module we're going to take um, it that depends on these things and we're going to publish to re registry.acme.com now uh, the in the original pro proposal I would basically take the the Apple uh, you know that Apple packet um, module and take all its dependencies and put them as as if they were layers inside a, a docker um, uh, inside a docker image um, so, so we have not only the top level archive, the top level um, code, but also all those dependencies, uh, which 
I think like that there's some there's some advantages to that. You know, you you actually you know, you, you you get the manifest once, and then you can instantly fetch all the dependencies if you're evaluating just a module on its own. Um, you know that all the dependencies are always there available, regardless of anything else in the registry. Um, and and if you copy, if you just use something like Scopio or something to copy a module, it will automatically include its dependencies. Um, so those are some advantages of it, but there are some other things that aren't so great. Um, so if you do that, then, well, you might have access to one of those dependencies. Um, but uh, what you're doing there, but implicitly, is making that available to anyone that can access the top level module, um, which, you know, could be considered uh, an implicit subversion of access control. Um, so you're, you're, you're copying this thing and it's copying the dependencies. It's that's not explicit. Um, and we're worried that that potentially, uh, you know, makes people vulnerable to uh, to 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 being, you know, to to pushing dependencies, making things secret, things available that shouldn't be um, that uh, that that should be kept secret and are not. Um, and that so the the uh, so what what I think we've decided, or at least we're certainly considering this, um, is that we should not do that originally proposed thing so when you publish a module it just publishes exactly the zip file for the module itself um and uh and and if you all the, the dependencies always all have to be pushed separately to different repositories in that registry um and if you want to copy uh, copy a, a module from one registry to another you're going to have to copy all the dependencies, all the transitive dependencies as well. Either, I mean, initially, probably explicitly, um, there might be some tooling to, to make that um, to make that easier. Although that then gets around some of the, you know, then then you've got another potential foot gun. But it maybe if it's explicit, if you explicitly ask for that, then that's okay. Um, it, most other things in the design remain the same. Um, uh, so that's so 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 here's a here's a to, to sort of illustrate um here's um the non-bundled version so where you've got uh you know this this apple thing and we've got these other things that it depends on but it doesn't depend it doesn't include them directly so if you want to evaluate uh this um you know this this apple module you will pull in that and then you will actually do uh, a, a, you know, you look up by tag um, into the uh, and, and repository into to find the other um, the other the other modules um, because uh, which might of course might not exist, but um, but they, hopefully they will. Um, I thought there was another module, another diagram as well. Oh yes, so this is yeah, this is the original diagram where we've got everything um, everything all as part of the. Uh, uh, the same thing, and and this is the sort of new uh, the, the, what what we probably will end up doing. Um, and as far as what we're doing next, so we're we're going to continue um, uh, continue landing those changes in queue, which is all experimental, um, and and implement the the GitHub app and that that central registry uh, deploy the registry. So. Um, so that then eventually you will, uh, in not too long, be able to actually, um, you know, to um, upload apps or have the GitHub app upload uh, app, uh, modules for you um, to uh, and, and be able to download them and evaluate them with the queue command. Um, there's, of course, there's a bunch of stuff in the queue command that in around the queue mod tidy and that sort of thing that that's. This is this is where this is our, our initial thing is going to be like this. Um, um, yeah, I can talk to this if you like. Um, yeah. uh, David Gamba just linked to uh, a link to something that's being discussed in the open Terraform space where they are considering using OCI as a means of distributing the Terraform providers and other aspects of the Terraform world. Um, just linking to it here, uh, David didn't suggest there was anything in particular implications or lessons wise for Q, 
so this is more just an FYI uh, and flagging in case anybody thinks, oh, there is something we can learn here. I don't think it fundamentally changes anything having glanced at it that we're considering on our side of things um, because fundamentally it's just a different usage of OCI it, it, and it's the usage of OCI uh, that, that is particularly, it, it isn't particularly interesting because it's just OCI, it's just the spec. So that the, by definition, there's nothing else um, uh, other than the application on top of it that is using it. Tony? I'm wondering, do you know what if they're doing any sort of dependency management and what they're using for that sort of resolution? You know, I know that the Timoni project is doing OCI based modules for Q, but they're aligning with how Helm does dependencies or imports and whatnot. And it's kind of just like a project spec have like one level and there's not like a, a dependencies of dependencies look up. And I guess mm -hmm. my broader question is, uh, knowing that we want Q to like layer on top of these other ecosystems that have a different way of thinking about how modules are like organized and distributed. How do we align these two concepts so that we can like work with them when we want to like have Q implementing the in those ecosystems? Work with who, just to be clear, sorry, because you listed a few folks there, the open platform uh, folks, I guess Timoni. Like, they're all migrating towards this like flatter, like dependency space per project. So if I have a project, there's like a, flat like these are my dependencies you just copy them in essentially kind of like how you just like like there isn't like a, a fetch dependencies that walk some dependency tree it's just like go fetch this one thing rather than like this at least that's what i've seen in some of it i'm just wondering mm -hmm. uh about that kind of stuff or i guess maybe more broadly like you could talk about like other dependency management systems but maybe that's beyond the scope here i was just thinking because of oci it tends to be um, I, I don't know, uh, uh, it's, um, I'm not, I, I can't say I fully grok maybe what you're getting at there, but f fundamentally there's a, one, one of the things that the, because we have this concept of things coming from different registries, but with the public private split being like a, perhaps the most pertinent example of that, right? Where you're saying, oh, I've got this private stuff coming from here and this public stuff coming from here then we kind of necessarily don't have that situation where you can get all your dependencies at once. Because if I'm getting my module from the private side of things, but my configuration is such that it should resolve the public dependencies from the central registry, say, then <laughs> it's sort of that, that configuration itself implies that the, the private registry does not have the, the dependencies that exist on the, the central registry. It could, in which case I could just drop the routing file altogether and say, I'm just going to speak to my private registry. And in that case, and I think this is what on one of the earlier slides we sort of hinted at is, if you know that you have got all dependencies on a given registry, then maybe there are optimizations we can sort of bake in effectively that make that lookup at runtime more efficient so that you logically just download one thing, maybe. But in, in the general case, I don't know that we can necessarily do that because things can come from different places. And uh, I, yeah, it, it doesn't strike me that it's reasonable for us to assume that everything can exist on one registry because that's effectively how we got to having the discussion about the public private split in the first place right and, and that sort of seemed like a reasonable conclusion if actually we're sort of thinking oh no no everyone should just have everything on their registry that they need and they should be responsible for copying it here there or everywhere then that's a slightly different discussion but it sort of seemed to me like we'd arrived at what is a reasonable position for saying that it, it can't, we can't require people to have all the things on one registry. And so that we have to have this logical view of a single registry, but as we said, routing to different registries behind the scenes. But I think if we can, if there are runtime optimizations for downloading of um, dependencies, then great. Does that make sense, Tony? I think we're talking about different things. Oh, sorry. Then, I, in which case, uh, my apologies, because I yeah, this is more mean. like 
when I get like a chart for Helm, I'm not like, there's no SAT solver or MBS going on, right? Like if I ask for dependencies for my chart, it's gonna just go down a list and just fetch those directly. There isn't any like version chart. Or, I mean, there's a version like go get this image tag more or less, right? So there's mm -hmm. like, I guess, ecosystems that are using OCI and like Sembers differently and don't do this like dependency of dependencies walk. When Does I that mean that get me this stuff. So I mean, I'm kind of using Timoni as example that's Q based, but using this different style of like a Timoni module is just like an image in a thing. You fetch it like a Docker image, more or less. There's a pull rather than a like tidy or a fetch all, like a, like a GoMod download. That doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I think there's like an init where it will just like go through that list, but there aren't like a, a, a Timoni module can't necessarily like say, I have these dependencies, import them for like for me. So, I, you know, I guess getting back to it, like we want Q to be in these egos. And maybe the whole thing is the point is that like they should adapt to how like a proper dependency management works than like us trying to like shoehorn into something that's not like doing anything nearly as sophisticated. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I mean, to me, like, if you just require a single level thing like that, that basically means that everything in the in the store needs to be a, a leaf module. You can't have any, like, you can't, you know, import something that gives you, um, you know, schemas for uh, GitHub Actions, for example, right. and then build something on that, and then make that available yourself. It just, you know, that so so. I, and I, I think yeah, that's why I'm not using Timoni because I can't do that kind of stuff, and that's like what I want. It seems like a very, my, big, like, very big limitation when, when, when you know. And I think we can all see the potential for you know this whole ecosystem to evolve, where you've got you know you, you've got foundations that you can build on, and then you can build some building blocks on top of that, and then other people can use those. And that that's you know it seems to me yeah, like, yeah. That, that you kind of have to do some kind of dependency tree type thing. I, yeah, I guess maybe my my personal conclusion is like let's not worry about it, and they can adapt. Yeah. Yeah. So one thing, um, in, instead of having the actual sort of like if you will hard links, that's the way I conceptualize it, uh, to the to the blobs, right? I can also imagine just having a list, like explicit, you know, like a third blob that just lists the things that you need to download. That might also accelerate it a bit. Um, but I think the um, yeah the, the the main reason like the way Docker does it right that all the layers are are sort of linked in in the blobs that I mean that's that's a factor of of having uh, really public modules only depending on public modules I believe or at least within the same repository and we cannot uh, I mean in, in, in this design that we're now going to that that will not be possible right so that's why we're sort of proposing to to not to do this uh, thing where everything is linked in and unless you unless people really object right or think this is a bad direction we're going to then we can revisit this but we yeah it looks like this will you know not result in good uh, security properties basically uh, uh, tony i tend towards your conclusion as well and that uh, uh, as you were saying that generally speaking to have a, an ecosystem that can grow and versions can change and you do need some sort of solving not sat solving but mvs in our case for working out okay which version should we use here it, it's it's a relatively straightforward system uh, in some respects it would have been nice if uh the because th there's nothing go specific about go modules in certain ways it is it is it's the file is called go.mod and the checksum is called go.sum but otherwise okay it doesn't use oci as a protocol and so if we look at what we're doing with q here fundamentally i don't think we've actually changed anything about what that 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 means a dependency resolution is doing with respect to go we're still using mvs right we're using oci as a backing store we have a a different file format for the module file and it happens to be stored within a file q.mod slash module.q but that is perhaps the only thing about it that is actually Q specific if I was to sort of hold it a slightly different way. And so perhaps to answer your question a different way around, and this is this was actually one of my not hopes, but sort of back of the back back of the fag packet thoughts about the Go module ecosystem is you could piggyback entirely 
on the Go module ecosystem for just any dependency management system at all, just happening to store stuff in Go modules, right? Absolutely not suggesting anybody do that, of course, but theoretically, there's no reason why you couldn't do that if actually you were able to capture the the, the dependencies that Go Mod Tidy picks up in, in, in your in your module declarations, etc., and sort of perhaps fake those via um, uh, an actual Go file or something like that. Uh, that being the case, really, there's nothing that would preclude something like the module approach that we're following, I think, being like a general purpose dependency, MVS-based dependency management system for whatever, except that that's not like a specific goal that we have in mind. We're thinking about it from a Q perspective, but I don't think sort of applying that same argument, it's specific to Q. Someone could just copy paste for want of a better phrase the, the same type of thing and if for their system over there or for their language whatever it might be and they could also have an oci backed mvs based dependency management system and that sort of feels like a reasonable-ish approach given as we said we're not gonna we we need to solve in some situations for the fact that some dependencies depend on some versions and some and this later version thing is is just a thing already so yeah, uh, I, I could say like the first pass of Hoff with dependency management was like a general MVS, and uh, I regret doing that. Um, another thing, though, like thinking about, I was I had this idea like there's attributes or labels on images, and I can imagine like you know we have these modules in Hoff that really kind of only make sense if you use them with Hoff. You, I mean, you can still evaluate them with the, the QCLI and like look at them and whatnot, and they can act like any Q dependency. But there's like attributes in them that make these values make sense in a certain context. And could we use attributes or labels to sort of annotate our modules such that we might be able to like partition the like searchable space of modules via flag or label? Yeah, something like that. I mean, that's that's an interesting thought, but I wonder whether whether is that like a module level thing or is that more actually a, like a package level thing? Because that's interesting too. Like, make it more granular. I was thinking uh -huh. at the, the module level, but package level is also interesting. You could imagine something which was, you know, where one of the packet because the those attributes and those way of interpreting things is more, you know, more at the package level. It seems to me, uh, and and maybe maybe there's a case for something that provides something off specific, but also something relevant to some other ecosystem, right? So, right. Uh, I, could, I could also see it being a module level thing as well. It's an interesting idea. I, I defer somewhat to Rog though, on whether is this, uh, I'm assuming this is, it's more of an attribute thing than an attestation thing. I'm guessing because it's more an attribute of say the module or a Rog as you were saying, or the package I'm guessing that is. I, I would say so. Yeah, it's, 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 it's an attribute of, of the code that you're writing and the, and the, the API yeah. that you're presenting, I guess. Um, Whereas the, the attestation thing is about the you know, something talking about the content, but that that's not to say that you can do one with the other. Well, that, the only reason I said attestation is that of course you can add attestations later. I I, I might be holding attestation mm -hmm. slightly wrong here. Attribute is something that I have to have defined before I've published the module, by definition, right? Because and it, so it, because it performed it it it. Uh, it um, Form is part of the checksum. It, it, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, attestations are after the effect, but could potentially be considered as attributes slash tags in the same way. So, Tony, I think generally speaking, whether it's an attribute that's part of the module or some sort of attestation afterwards, it doesn't sound like there's a reason why, therefore, some indexer that is on a registry couldn't either look at attributes or attestations or both and exactly as you suggest segment the search space to, to use your phrase it doesn't seem either technically impossible or an unreasonable thing to my mind for a registry that provides that to do it because yeah why why not mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, in a sense, if you're asking for like, I want things with this label A, you could just think of everything else as basically excluded from, you know, just has an exclude clause. Or, or, to, chuck, or to chuck a, a slightly different idea out there, rather than actually even needing attestations in the first place, let's just assume we're talking about the central registry for, for, an, for, for now. 
the central registry as, as as just an example there it knows all the the modules that are stored in the central registry you could write a query a queue like query to query the structure of the modules that are in the, re the registry such that you're basically saying give me all modules that have this shape and rather than it being like a, an annotation i think you're basically saying unless i'm misunderstanding hof modules have this shape where the shape is that they have a perhaps a package at the root called this or that the root package has this shape to it right and so maybe in that situation you don't even need an attribute it's something that you could query based on the shape of the modules or packages contained there within and that it's sort of like an implied interface for want of a better phrase in that sense as yeah well. no that's i definitely have patterns like that right now yeah sure sure sure. i mean it doesn't seem unreasonable not in q but in like go code where you're basically like give me everything that has this go interface it sounds a lot like yeah. that yeah yeah but i think I suppose, from a like pragmatic standpoint and like having queries that resolve in a reasonable amount of time across the registry having all the images and labels in the database would probably be the best oh yeah <laughs> you just build an index <laughs> offline yeah exactly it. exactly yeah. Um, but I still, I still wonder whether whether it's it's module level or package level that we'd be interested in here because, you know, how much we want to have you know modules with a particular shape, or you know whether whether we want you know packages whether you're more interested in, you know, because if you if I'm looking to import something, it's generally I'm looking for a, for a package. I don't import a module directly inside Qcode. I import. I, I, I think it depends. Level. It depends if 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 you're writing something like Hoff or some tool. Right, that that is using Q. It, it might be that that tool, for for reasons of the tool, just consumes modules that have a certain shape, for right. whatever reason. I, I'm I, I I totally take your point, Roger. If you're in sort of pure Q world, it is the package thing that is you're depending on. But if it's a tool, then that might not be the case. A tool that is leveraging Q and building on top of Q, I can I can sort that. I think I can understand where Tony is coming from with it in terms of saying, I, I consume things of this shape here. I I, I, I I don't know. I might have misunderstood, but it seemed to me that uh, Tony, correct me if I'm wrong, that it was more like the, the Q code in question. It wasn't that you had particular packages at particular locations in the module. It was more like the code was using off specific attributes and off specific stuff inside the packages. Was that? It's uh, well, it's probably a little bit of both, honestly. Okay, okay, okay. Mostly the, the latter with attribute. You know, we essentially walk looking, we walk the entire value looking for particular I mean, attributes, but more so like a definition like pound sign Hoff. Because uh -huh. like, so you could do way more with an actual value. So, you so you're, enumer you're, you're enumerating within a package, but you're not enumerating packages within a within a within a module yeah more or less if you think how the queue loader loads up and brings a build instance in we walk that value yeah makes sense yeah i, I might be um therefore conflating with what might might even be a misunderstanding of what timoni was thinking about doing at one point whether they're actually doing that or not i thought they wanted to effectively have a specific module shape but again i, 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 I think I'm, they do yeah, I, 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 I'm, I might be misremembering, but again, it was I, like I, another thing that was like not like I, I see the, the potential for Q. I could be flexible. I don't need to like conform to some directory. It, yeah, I, I'm not not arguing for or against it, in, right, uh, Rog? I think your your observation is probably key, right? In terms of it, it doesn't. It's probably more package related than module related. Yeah, and, but or there's another be, there's another question here. Really, it's is like how, what kind of what kinds of patterns are we are we wanting people to use into the future? What kinds of you know is it actually a good thing for to 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 for people to for ecosystems to evolve around modules with a particular shape, right? Yeah. Um, you know, is that actually a good a good way? Because you know that's it, it feels a bit like a framework, and maybe that's you know that's something that, for example, Go has has explicitly moved away from. You know, tried to not 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 make common um so there's yeah there's definitely definitely different aspects of it it's not just um you know, could we do this but also you know would it would it be a good idea to provide uh to first class support for that kind of module level 
thing. Incidentally, I think the thing that somewhat comes to our not rescue, but it, it, it's the port of your point there, Rog, is that Q load is the standard way of loading Q, right? And the LSP and Q related tooling uses Q load, and having that as being the the like the way of loading Q, it means that all patterns for loading Q must be known by Q load. We've already pointed out in the case of um, Vector, for example, there's probably other patterns than those that we that that Q load currently understands that we should explore and investigate and potentially support. I, I think we're somewhat saved in that if someone is not using standard Q load, i.e. they're doing some other stuff, right, then a tool that just uses Q load won't work in the same way as the tool that's doing the other stuff. And so LSP won't work, F formatting or whatever other tooling won't work. And so that sort of forces people to a, I don't want to necessarily call it the lowest common denominator of Q load, but effectively it is, right? And that's a good thing from like a standardization perspective for exactly the reason that you suggested on the um, the Go side is that Go has as well standardized in the way that Go code is loaded and that it's and the tooling has helped with that. So I'd suggest, yeah, it, it, maybe we're helped in that respect by the existence of Q load and encouraging people to write tooling that actually uses Q load, but keeping an ear open to load patterns that don't perhaps work very well today, allow the vector example and considering those and just making them first class citizens when 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 it sort of becomes clear how they should exactly work. Cool. Um, so uh, we've, uh, we've we've moved away from the uh, from the original question. I thought the previous one, so sort of general Q and A. Um, have either of you, like Rudy or Tony, got any uh, any questions for us? Anything you're interested in, or anything like that? We've already done a fair amount Q and A. I think we have, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Could you run back through the slides real quick again? Sure. Just so I can like refresh. Oh, we'll uh, publish these say, almost say, immediately say, after. Say, say when. Uh, just like a quick skim more than anything, just to remember, like, was there anything, maybe it was just jog some question more than anything else? Yeah, okay, so I'll just go through. Yeah, okay, we're not bundling. Yeah, yeah. As you know, I was thinking... So if you, you stop on, if you, sorry, Roger, you just go back to the previous slide, the, this one here, right? Just to, to visualize this, right, the bundling problem is that the top in this situation to visualize in this diagram here is that the top secret.com module ends up being pushed for want of a better phrase to registry.acme.com in that bundling situation. And that just to be super clear is the thing that potentially subverts access control, potentially in the general case creates legal issues because it, it, if, if we're doing that by default, it might not be at all obvious to the user that that's actually what happen what's mm -hmm. happening. And so, again, in the general case, we need to sort of be defensive, we think, such that it, it's very explicit if someone is wanting to do that, that they almost, I don't want to have to, have to say do it by hand, but, you know, if we if it's hidden in there and then topsecret.com slash mod ends up on acme.com and someone goes, hang on a second what on earth is this doing here it's just like whoa that that is a foot gun that we definitely want to avoid so that's the unbundling argument sort of visualized in this diagram here yeah that's what i'm wondering you know roger has talked about like it'd be nice if i could just get a module and execute it without having to do all the dependency and i actually like hit a case where i was like actually that would be kind of nice um and i so like there is like i think a desire to be able to ship it all with all the things right so yep. maybe it's behind a flag like include dependencies and then i was thinking that at least in one of the early versions of the like the, the new module.q file and like a you know a first pass of a schema had this private stuff in there and could you publish while filtering those out you know you have to do like an extra flag to, if there's private modules 
I was I was also wondering about that. So so like if you, for example, in this case, you know, presumably whoever's publishing Top Secret, you know, cares about the fact that it's secret and 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 could annotate it accordingly, in some respects, so that when you publish, uh, publish, you know, Apple, um, you know, you're publishing Apple, it sees the the annotation on on Top Secret and says, oh, I actually I'm not going to publish this. So I think you probably could do that. But maybe that's not defensive enough. I mean, at the same time, there's situations where, like, I am publishing into my own pri another private registry, and so I know it's safe. It's like we're going to ship all our stuff over here. The the automated systems are going to pick it up and start deploying it, right? And so I do want to. I don't want that thing to have to go like get, have all the credentials to like all the different like yep. other registries. I want to promote these assets and like having it fully bundled would be nice. So just Roger, if you don't mind going to not. the um, one, uh, not the next one, next one. Uh, that was slide before this one. Yeah. So I, I, again, it's not at all to say that use case isn't valid, Tony. Comp right. we're, we're totally saying it is, but that at the moment it sort of feels like the 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 risk slash foot gun slash whatever of doing that by default is sufficiently gray or unclear a risk that it's like it's it that would be a bad default to have yeah so, i 100 percent agree so i think you if, hide it behind flags and extra configuration oh well, yeah it, exactly and rog mentioned it earlier on whether it's a flag whether it's a separate command whether it's whatever right that the the, the actual the, the the starting point for a lot of the oci stuff was actually someone saying oh, i just want to do this in an air gapped environment exactly it's sort of like a a slight reframing of your example right i just i just want to have everything and yeah so that that absolutely is a use case so the tooling must help people get to that point it's i think it's what 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 are those commands called how, how do we sort of make sufficiently clear that someone is putting these things here and, and where do we just where's the line between that being like a something that we need to worry about and a caveat emptor of hey you might just end up copying stuff from here to here and that might not be legal you better watch out type thing so yeah i think we're just trying to be a bit more defensive in terms of not making the default something that bundles the dependencies because that doesn't feel safe yeah no i like this change generally speaking and we can add back the bundling later yeah exactly so. wondering if there's any opportunity for this at least i thought there was uh like a proposal that's trying to get into oci about like images having like essentially these dependency like relations in them you can have like a instead of like publish an image you, with it you publish like my dependencies uh in a like an image way like image manifest or something i know stefan was telling me about that with uh timoni are you talking about um manifest lists in this maybe is that what you're talking about i don't remember what it's called yeah, because there I is remember looking at it once. I remember not, it being like something like this. Yeah, it's not it's not standard, but mm -hmm. there is this kind of it with man. I think they're man called manifest list, but basically it's a, you know, it's 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 like a manifest, or it actually counts as a manifest, but it can point to other manifests, which in turn can point to other manifests. You know, yeah, that there's, sounds there's, like what this was. Tree relationship going on there, um, mm. which is not, which is not what we had here, but you could potentially do something like that to bundle things um the other the other possibility that just occurred to me actually is that um you could have essentially the same format in both the bundled and the non-bundled case um and just say you know basically when you're downloading something if the if the dependency is available in the in the bundle then just use it from there if not then you do the then you do the thing so you could then you have the choice at upload time how much to bundle and you know you could choose to bundle some things other th not other things is it's not it's not like an either or decision that, like that bundle happens. the registries that always go down so, sorry what bundle the registries that always yeah, go yeah, down absolutely yeah 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 or or, or, bun or always you know bundle bundle things in the central registry because you know that they're that they're, they're public from your point of view or you know that kind right. of thing um, but but yeah some 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 decision that you could make that you could provide the facility to to, to make app but uh, effectively i think that's what we're doing right is we're, we're what we we're, we're saying is that the 
working out how to help people make that choice is a decision we're just pushing to later. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing we're not doing is actually, for want of a better phrase, uploading the zip files of the dependencies. That That's the thing we're not doing. Roger, is I, if I understand correctly, we might not even change the manifest format as you propose. We might just simply skip the zip file uploading. I, do, I don't understand OCI, and so someone might actually say, oh, you clearly have got no idea what you're talking about in that, because of course you would need to have known what the blob is or so. I, I just don't know. But um, th then effectively, what in saying this, I think we end up with that same logical conclusion of though, working out what you should upload, Tony, is just something we can sort of postpone to later slash use explicit tooling for potentially just to, to make it clearer what it is that's going on. But equally, we could say, nah, you know what, it's fine, have a dependencies flag and it just uploads everything because that's actually the most common use case. Or we might say, oh, we need it to be more um, precise so that you say only upload these things because as you say, XYZ server fails the whole time. So we definitely want to make these things available. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's ideas like tree shaking. Could you shake down the dependency to its bare minimum that you need for a particular use case? Or like, you know, for us, we are, we have these templates around and they're on disk. They're not in the queue file. We're not doing them with strings. We load them up separately. And so we have this way we reference like a particular directory within the module uh knowing that it's going to end up in this one place probably or like we assume it's in this you know the qmod slash package directory and then we know the module name and we index there and so could you like sw like separate would embeds be separate or like could you have snapshots of the a module based on a particular build tag sort of in line with tree shaking yeah, I mean that's an interesting, interesting thought. Actually, you could probably do that. I mean, you could. So, for example, say we had the um, say module. You know, we had a module in this sort of case. But say you wanted some notion of you know the, the ability to put together. You could have like a kind of manifest list that points to, you know, that that the manifest for the module, but also points to some of its dependencies. So that was a kind of refers to relationship rather than a sorry referred to by rather than a first to relationship if you like um so that that would be i think that would be that would be possible it's a bit like it's a little bit like an annotation actually maybe it is just an annotation um in that uh, you'll say you're you're basically you have something that is pointing to this manifest and saying uh here are your dependency here are the dependencies of this i assert that these dependencies of this thing are these blobs i think you could probably do that so it's like a yeah and after station i guess in the sense even cross repo uh sorry when when what do you mean by repo there what is refers to and stuff like that um, or maybe i'm not understanding what you're saying i mean i i, I like I, I think if it has so it wouldn't so so say you Say we've got this Apple thing here, right? And say you did want yeah. cross registry. Well, yeah. well, I mean, the point is that you would choose who, what you wanted to bundle with it. So, like, if I wanted to bundle it with, uh, if I wanted to associate it directly with example called slash mod, then I could essentially make a new module which encompassed both Acme .com slash Apple as the kind of primary thing and the dependency example.com slash mod, but without topsecret.com. Um, so you could you could do that, and you could do that after Apple uh, acme.com slash Apple is published. So regardless of where those dependencies come from, you can still potentially form a bundle. This is a kind of bundle, I suppose. But also, as with other attestations, when you copied acme.com slash Apple, you can also the standard tools can can be asked to copy things that refer to the attestations as well, the things which have a subject of that uh, that, that manifest that, that particular thing. So that it seems, yeah, that's that's possibly a, a, maybe a nicer way to do it actually.
an interesting use case. You know, Q is used in like a configuration a lot, right? And so you imagine like I got a pod running in Kubernetes and I want to configure, I want that config map to be like Q based. But then that could like have multiple files and dependencies. And like, I'm not like aware of many configuration loading systems that it, like account for more than one file when they like think about loading up configuration. So Q kind of like makes this thing more complex just by the nature of this. I'm uh, just wondering, like, it's very close to, like, I want to publish a module. I think that's where a lot of this is coming from. Like, there's, I want to publish a module or I want to, like, publish something like a queue environment with its dependencies to evaluate. It's very similar to, like, publishing a module, but it's not. I think yeah. you've thought and talked about this before. Yeah, I mean, I think it is, it is pretty similar. Um, but it, yeah, is it is it is it actually the same? That I mean, you could consider it as the same. I think um, you know, I'm publishing a local module which has all my configuration in that I evaluate, get the YAML that is then passed to Kubernetes, whatever. Um, but even assuming e Kubernetes, let's just imagine in that situation that Kubernetes actually understood how to load Q, so it used Q load, for example. I think in that situation, and unless I misunderstood your point, Tony. I, I clearly misunderstood something earlier, so I'll try. Um, if, if I've if I've downloaded and cached, sorry, I'm in a that meet, I'm in a public okay. meeting. Sorry, be with you soon. Unless I um, uh, download and uh, sorry, uh, one way of ensuring that effectively you have logically one configuration file. Is to do like a QMod download on that module on which you're depending, such that the that the module and its dependencies are all cached. So that logically, then when Q load runs, it doesn't have to do it, it can that that's like the air gap situation, right? You you know, even though it is a module plus its dependencies, you're logically loading one configuration file. Now, if you wanted to optimize that in terms of I don't know, really reducing it down to one Q file, then I think the the one thing we could potentially lean on there is something that, like in the Go world, there's this um, way of effectively bundling things where you, you sort of reduce a, well, in the Go world, it's slightly different because that's on a package level. You, you're bundling all files as one Go file. But you could conceive of the same thing in the Q world, I think. And Marcel, this is like the um, inline oh, imports, inline packages. Thank you. The inline imports and the um, what's the other term that I'm after there? The stuff we did with the inline imports, where effectively it just oh goodness, I'm so sorry, I'm forgetting the name of this. The inline errors. Was that done at the same time? No, it was the stuff where, when we were working with the Kubela folks, and the, and we wanted to, um, yeah, oh, something just... like remove the the references or expand. Yeah, them. exactly. Um, but that's that's a iffy iffy thing. So it's really the inline imports and the. Yes, it's probably just the inline imports. Actually, what's, what's you're right. What's internally called the the pivoter that you can basically take an arbitrary tree and like like yeah. sort of add all the dependencies to it to, to be fair i think it's probably you're right it's just the inlining of imports so you then logically end up with just one package value which guess what we could just make one q file and there you still got the same configuration logically at that point so i i, I think we could potentially do something like that so you end up presenting just one q file that is logically identical to the thing that originated from a module plus dependencies with multiple packages with multiple files, etc. You could even provide that as an attestation. Um, hmm? You could even provide that as, a, as an attestation. So someone's done that in the past, and you've like, oh, we've we've actually made this thing, which is a single thing, and we're saying, if you run, uh, you know, export on, you know, whatever uh, eval minus inline imports on this, this is the result you get, but without actually having to do that work yourself. Mm -hmm. um, which is kind of interesting. By the way, when you said QMod download, do you, I was wondering maybe that's sort of, is that actually QMod vendor, in fact? Or is that? Not necessarily. Vendor, vendor in the Go world is a sp very specific thing where it actually creates a vendor. Mm -hmm. Mod download just ensures the local cache, 
the modules cache is is fully populated so, such that if in a main module you do go mod download you could disconnect your network cable at that point from but, from but the you're still, it's, it still needs to be connected from from that i suppose but you're if you're talking a docker environment then you do that kumod download then you make your image i suppose that's the that's the idea right wasn't there sorry, something about docker comment with that sorry i lost well, the docker connection well, it's like because you have to have network access to do the go kumod download but yep. if you have network access then you don't need to, you're not air gapped yeah but the, the scenario is where you would be air gapped i was saying because if for example if you're if it's if it's a pod or whatever the thing that's running let's assume it doesn't have network access for just whatever reasons right all i was saying is that lo logically presenting of that single configuration file could be achieved by doing multiple things like a qmod download plus this then this in in like well you don't even need the the qmod download if you if you if you just have this q, q def minus inline imports thing if you could just run that and that did all the necessarily downloading and you've generated a single q file at the end of that <clears throat> you're done so qmod download was just a way of saying well actually you don't need to do the inline and imports thing if you did a qmod download you'd be able to do a q load of the module knowing that you wouldn't have to hit the network at all right okay that, that then you'd, you'd have to like save that result and then before your pod started yeah. sure 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 yeah. sure yeah yeah but we, which is where we then moved on to that discussion of actually you know what you may as well just def it as a single with inline imports to get a single file maybe or something maybe although then that then that's that has its own disadvantages right because you have this one ten thousand line file you know oh. so the error messages don't look anything like you know it's like <laughs> yeah very, very very much yeah yeah <laughs> could add like the the file directive or what's it called in go yeah the, uh, that's like the line line directive isn't it yeah that's it, like taken grandfathers from c i think um the yeah. thing is the, the challenge is that even i mean that assumes there's a one-to-one -one correspondence Tony, I'm guessing the one thing you'd yeah. want is effectively the equivalent of a single binary. It is is like your. Is, I it, thought is, I heard something about Kubernetes, like thinking about using OCI layers for config maps and secrets, or something like that. So you could like specify a conf, like an OCI layer for your config map. Yeah, that would be really cool. Honestly, I would support that. I was going to make some cheeky joke about like Q poll policy on the make it a recommendation to add that to like a pod spec or something i so i actually miss uh, again i was just holding what you suggested slightly wrongly and that i thought that you were trying to draw like an analogy between the fact that oh it's easy for me to just push a go binary around all over the place because it's just the binary and i can run it wherever right in q we don't have that logical single file concept Right, so I thought you were actually nudging towards that. Let's let's imagine we had the ability for, for to pass around a zip file. Just go with that. Yeah, no, that's like it's something I would like to see as well. No, totally. This is actually like in line with the use case I was thinking of. Like, I want an executable environment. Like, I want to ship Q with like that somebody else could like download and run without having to like worry about things. And it's not necessarily a module, right? And it's something. also not necessarily something we have to do on the OCI. Think about it like the reproducers. Imagine like Q could use like, oh, I got this reproducer, just like set it up to GitHub for the Q team to look at. And it's got all of the like context that you need to actually do that reproducer. Well, I think there's like, a much a greater idea there generally about reproducers. Well, it's isn't like, that much of us. No, because it's not a single file. That's the that's the point we're talking about. It, a bit about it being a single file right okay so so but i mean you could potentially you know uh tx tar or something like that you know yeah well that, i was just about to say it's like tx tar on steroids but it's definitely not human readable because you want well it could be i guess i mean it would be a massive tx tar but yeah maybe it is it's a possibility wow tx tar just gets another use case 
I, I'm all for having much more uh, TX star integration. Yeah, yeah. You. <laughs> really all for it. Right. Well, it's, I mean, first that was support for TX star. What? It's a first nice class support for TX star. Sorry. Yes. Well, first well, class was... a bit pushing it, but. Well, I mean, we we've sort of it's it's not a crazy thing because we've talked about there being first class support for TX tar for reasons, right? And yeah, like if, if this can chop up. Yeah, if this self contained thing is is whatever format it is, TX tar or whatever, you probably want to be passing around something that's compressed. I'm it's guessing kind, it's kind um, of the moral equivalent of uh, maybe of YAML's multiple documents. It, it absolutely is, yeah. But but yeah. with the document with name, it's actually more useful. I think. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's very much yeah. the moral equivalent of that. Thankfully, we're getting close to time so that we don't get into a YAML uh, <laughs> opinion session here. Not Sorry, the, the, the word passed by there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't talk about my essay I'm working on, the nine. It's like based on Dante's uh, Inferno, the nine circles of YAML. Oh, oh really? <laughs> that's fun. Yeah. yeah, the DevOps Inferno, the, the circles, the nine circles of YAML. Yeah. Yeah, well. yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. it oh thank goodness where it's the top of the hour yeah. Yeah. <laughs> otherwise there'll be it's more funny. puns <laughs> top and bottom of the hour yeah never mind yeah staying and let us speak yeah anyway is there uh, not related to modules there oh any estimate on when zero seven or like new evaluator efficiencies are coming out? I, I got some. I've been hurt in the last couple of days with some stuff. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I can. So I'm working on the new evaluator, making good progress. The new um, little scheduler um, is is uh, I mean doing its job extremely well. So I did discover a new type of cycle which uh, I never thought of. And I actually, that, th from that, I developed a theory which I could create tons of test cases, which I now tested on the old evaluator and I actually break a lot of cases. So this is really something that was never thought about, basically. But if I really think about it realistically, it's not. It's more like a general generalization of self-reference cycles. So once you handle that, you actually automatically also handle self-reference cycles. So it's really more like a tweaking of the model and it actually collapses various interpretations of the old cycle so it actually makes it simpler but uh it, it takes me about a week to to figure this all out and implement it's probably just like going to be three lines of code or something like that but i, I can appreciate those situations yeah but, but it's, oh, yeah. It, it's 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 something leading code more than anything yeah actually uh yeah actually yeah uh, deleting and adding a few lines at a at a crucial place um so so basically then i have so I'm, I'm basically disabling a bunch of the the even though i've already implement implemented but I'm, what, what i'm doing is i'm disabling or filtering out basically any ast so tests with like disjunctions or whatever and 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 so i'm filtering a lot of this out and basically testing the core with with dynamic fields and some other things that are really tricky with uh, with cycles so focusing on the core cycle thing first and then I'm, um, so now I have like two tests that don't pass there. And then I'm sort of adding slowly, adding in every, there's like six features I disabled or seven or something like that. And then I'm adding them back in. And then, uh, so most of them should be quite straightforward because the, like the scheduler, I haven't added uh, comprehensions yet, for example. But the core of how to handle, so this, the scheduler is tested independently. So I've already simulated like how comprehensions work and, and that cycle handling works. Uh, so it's, it shouldn't be too hard. Um, the only thing that is going to be really hard is uh, disjunctions with this new model. So, um, so maybe I'm just going to go for a high constant, low, big O approach, which should be a lot better than what we have already right now. Because uh, yeah, right now it's very high O. Basically, it's like exponential, whereas really it should at least be uh, quadratic, and it can even be linear in the vast majority of cases, right? Like handling disjunctions. Uh, I, I think a, actually, okay, can, yeah, yeah, it can be linear in actually many cases because if you have two 
once you find two examples, right, or once you find two disjunctions, you, you kind of stop, you can stop, right? Because unless you want to simplify a definition or a, a schema or whatever, but uh, you know you can never resolve that anymore, right? So you, you might as well stop. Sounds like a lot of bookkeeping. Uh, yeah, and the, the new closeness algorithm can handle that. So it basically will will say uh, you need to evaluate until you have enough information to determine closeness, but it, it does so as quickly as possible, basically. So that's the, but it, it gives you the freedom of, of evaluation order, basically. So that's the that's the trick. So so yeah, so all, all of that is ready. All of that is ready, but, and, and it's really neat, right? Like you really see, like if you have these sort of cyclic dependencies, right? Like right now there's actually between fields, right now there's this uh, quadratic Sort of evaluation because I don't know which order they need to be evaluated. Um, so I, I'm just trying, right, until the right order is found. Basically, that's how the current evaluator works. And, and with the new scheduler, it just you know like uh, you know like, like records the dependency and then it just resolves the dependency and every task only gets run once essentially. So that's that's already quite nice. Your uh, question, Tony, and the the discussion on um, Slack about whether we should replace Slack with something else as far as just reminds me we should actually get the next community call scheduled in so that we can sort of update on the evaluator and update on various things. So I'll look to get something probably penciled in or look to just refresh my sample when we had the last one, probably at the beginning of October, so a month after the last one. Make sure we can continue updating on stuff. Cool. We are slightly over. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks, Tony, Rudy, for joining. Um, if And for anyone who's watching, I guess if anyone has any thoughts, reflections on the bundling versus unbundling thing, please feel free to uh, add comments in the dis in the GitHub discussion that we've created around this session we're, t we're having now, or just ping in Slack and we can sort of capture things and put them in the right place. And YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> it helps. I've like, got, gotta I've beat got the algorithm. Like, Q is things. great. We gotta get to the. That's a great algorithm inside <laughs> of Q. We need to like help us with the YouTube algorithm, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alrighty. Thanks. All right, I'll stop recording. Bye. 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 Bye.